It is almost done now for the changes of direction. This should be the last one, I would imagine. The right-hander, there it is, next to the beach. Oh, we've Straight had a crash, up. we've yep. had a crash. Oh, it's a long way out. Right of course, Gavidia is down. Alpacine struggling with Groves. Gavidia getting back up, and you've got riders oh, in Yumbo on. Visma. It looks as like Ackerman scored out as well, and he's got mechanical problems. It was all building up here. The final turn, Robbie McEwen. <laughs> the last corner of the entire day. It shows you how slippery it is, because they were taking it quite easy, but maybe that's it. Last corner, get a bit complacent, and look at the huge split in the peloton. Now, the question is... How hard do they continue on? They're not going full gas at the front here, Sudal Quickstep. They don't want to make themselves any enemies for the rest of the race. In their best interest, just to keep cruising and allow riders to return. Remco Evenepoel is at the front and out the way. The Maya Rosa is here. Now, has he been caught out or is he up the front now? Because you can see Albert Torres there dropping back to try and help Fernando Gaviria. Chase. And I think that the Maya Rosa is caught out now. Tim and Ardensman has been caught out as well here in the white jersey for Ineos Grenadiers. And you can see it's a frantic chase. They were setting up the sprint there, Sam. They are now trying to set up a return to the front for their race leader. This is solid pace setting without being... Well, without going as hard as we just want to prevent anybody coming back. They're just going to say we're just staying safe, maintaining position... But it's going to be incredibly difficult for riders to come back and uh, know that it's not Primoz Roglic, everybody. But it's his bike. There's been an incident yep. there. So Primoz Roglic has had to take Kuhn Bauman's bike. This is Fernando Gavidia. Still getting going. Oh, he's not well, going to be involved in the sprint today. No, that's going to be game over, isn't it? 7K to go. Well, you never know. You never know. 7K to go along the beach front. And if the, if the commissaires allow vehicles to move forward... And he can get in behind and, and ride the slipstream, then it's a possibility still, but a slim one. Now, what happens here? Because Primoz Roglic has obviously been caught out here. They it's... pedal on at the front. The race is on, and it's very high up. So Roglic caught out. Yeah. Thomas is OK. Even the pool we've seen is OK in there. And there is that was Roglic what? going down. I think that might be... Oh, I'm not sure, you know. This is Gavidia. And there was Ackerman on the left-hand side. We know that Gavida and Ackerman are going to be at the game for the sprint. Yeah, and it was one of the Alperson riders themselves who fell as first. And really, not trying to go too quick, not trying to pedal too much through the corner. It's just incredibly slippery. This is a real race here because 5Ks to go. Catania's on the front. I have to say, he looks like he's riding really, really hard now. Behind, Roglic is in the next group. But look in the wheels. There's guys freewheeling in the rest of that group behind Sudal Quickstep. So they're, they're not giving it everything. They're not really trying to take huge advantage of the situation. They, they know that they need to just keep pedalling on, but they're not trying to hold off the group coming back in any case. Roglic is there with the Maliaros, and I think Hugh Carthy might be in that group as well for EF Education Easy Post. This is the front of the race. Now Ineos Grenadiers will come to the front on the left-hand side. Ben Swift is there. That's Ballerini getting rid of a coat. Andrea Pasqualon's in there. Milan's on his wheel, so he's there for the sprint. A couple of riders still in here now for Alpacinda Koenig. Cavendish Kev. is in this group. So Cavendish has managed to get out of the way of the crash, and he's going to put himself in the mix here for a sprint to the line. Remember, we didn't get to see him sprint the other day. He was involved in the crash. 3.9 k's to go. It's a huge effort with just under four kilometres to go now by Primoz Roglic and also by the Maglia Rosa, Anders Lechnesson. Andreas Lechnesson coming back on here. He's in the pink jersey a little further down. And this is panic stations, though, for Primoz Roglic, who needs to get back in because Ian Nepal's safe, Thomas is safe, Gagan Hart is there, and some of the sprinters have survived, but we know the likes of Gavidia's out, Ackerman's out. It's chaos with 3.5 k's to go, sure. Yes, it is uh, a real panic moment, but we can see here Roglic and uh, Legnus on the uh, pink jersey is about to get back in there, so... Um, and the rest, we can see they're coming up there, but... Uh, yeah, they went around that corner, you know, not anything crazy, but it just shows how slippery it, uh, it is here. And luckily now that it's a straight run to the finish, because if we had a few more corners to come up, this would be a harbour run in. But uh, looking like uh, the guys who got... Uh, tied up or got uh, uh, delayed by the crash all back together.
I've got to say, it's quite sporting by Sudal Quickstep and Ineos. Just, they've been riding mm -hmm. in the front, yes, but they haven't been pushing the pace trying to prevent anyone from coming back. And then most of the peloton is returning. There was the pink jersey. The Maglia Rosa is returning as well, but only three kilometres to go. Very little time for sprinters and their teams to get organised after that return. Now the battle really starts. The big peloton has come back together. The sprinters will need to drag themselves up to the front. Now the re return of Alpacint. Matthews there on the right with Jaco. Lula. Cavendish was sitting in the middle over there on the left, in fact, behind Trek Segafredo with Muds Patterson. Decker moving up on the right hand side. Betterson oh, is there as well. You more. can see, and a big crash, big crash, big crash. Avonapool's down again. No time loss here in the last three Ks, but Avonapool is down and it's crashed the umpteenth one of the day. More drama of the kind we don't want at the Giro d'Italia. For the second time today, Remco Avonapool is down, and for the second time today, He's taken his time to get up. Yes, well, again, you know, just uh, a lot of movement there, coming back together, and, uh, yeah, down they go again. And for Remco, it's just uh, one of these uh, terrible days for him. And we can see, this, you know, the race is going on now, but luckily, inside the final three kilometres, uh, uh, you know, they're credited at the same time as the group they're in. So for the GC, no change for the men at the top of that classification. And Remco back on his feet here. <laughs> He's looking just at the race go by. And it looks as though there has been involvement for one of the main Bora Heinz score riders as well. I don't know if that is Alex Vlasov or not, but I know that there are two riders waiting. You'd imagine, in that case, it's either Kemner or Vlasov. Here at the front, though, just over a kilometre remaining, and it's Jaco Alulu who are trying to set things up for Michael Matthews. Behind Caden Groves, wait, you've got Myers Meyerhofer in there, ready and waiting as well. Dainese is actually at the back of their train today, on the day that Andreas Lechnesund knows he will keep the Maglia Rosa. Mark Cavendish following the wheels. There's Consomni in there in the red and white. You can see in the red jerseys, Mas Pearson is involved as well. Jonathan Milan, who today looks like he's kept his black rain jacket on, is all ready to go as we go under the one kilometre to go banner we've seen plenty of chaos today they'll be holding onto their hats here it's straight all along in Sean we're going to have a long big sprint now yes we can see here and uh, it looks like Pascal is there with Milan in his wheel so a perfect situation if they can hold that for the next couple of hundred metres uh, but we can see there you know there's a lot of riders and a lot of the sprints are still very much in contention now inside the final 600 metres all about holding that good position Milan there in fourth wheel. It is going to be Dainese to sprint today for DSM on the right hand side. Decker has been dropped off by Rousseau. We're 350 metres for the line now. Busselberger is trying to help out as it's Michael Matthews who's ready to go. Mark Cavendish, the British champion, is following in as well. The sprint is launched with 200 metres to go. Groves is there. Matthews trying to catch up. But look at Milan coming through the centre. Milan's there with Cavendish alongside him. Milan trying to get around Groves. I'm not sure he can this time. It's Caden Groves all the way. Oh, the huge crash is there. They come across the line. Cavendish going down across the line as Caden Groves wins a stage of the Giro d'Italia. And on a chaotic day, we've seen plenty of scenes we didn't want to see. The only man happy at the outcome, I will suggest today, is Caden Groves, the stage winner. Groves stakes an eventual horrible day. Five stages down. This might be one we remember at the end for all the things we didn't want to see happen. I'd suggest the only happy man is Caden Groves. Stage five taken by Groves. Alpacin de Koenig worked well, but Cavendish down. Several riders there as well on a day where there was a crash, not once, but twice for Remco Evenepoel. Primoz Roglic was caught out there. A hellish day on the Giro d'Italia.